I've not recorded myself for a long time. Honestly, there was not much to tell or show. I didn't find much in the past couple of weeks. So what is left when you can't find anything in already scouted locations? I'm in a new location for myself. I got a hint from a friend and check out Peta's channel on Instagram. I put it here and I put it in the description. And he has a feed which has a lot of badgers and other animals, really good wildlife photography. And we are going to talk and trying to capture badgers today. So that's the topic. I'm not only new in this surroundings right now, but I don't live in this place for so long. And a thing that I really realized is important for wildlife photography is to have a network. And I don't really have a network yet, which makes it a bit complicated to find good locations where you can just hang out where you know there's a good frequency of wildlife coming around. And that's a really good point. Look that you have a network of fellow wildlife photographers or you have contacts to hunters and farmers which basically know, yeah, know their way locally around the area and which can give you hints. That's really important when you start with it and I'm still lacking a good network and that's something I have to work on. Yeah. It's not that easy sometimes if you don't want to talk to people. <laughs> So the first time, last time I came here, I misunderstood the directions a bit. But I stumbled upon this thing here. And this is a badger toilet. Badgers are really clean animals. And it's not allowed to leave your droppings inside the den. The den is clean from time to time. And she's really funny animals. So this is a clear indicator that also here, even in the wrong location, there are badgers around. So, I'm filming badgers going to the toilet. It's not my intention to get that material, but if you know that they come there, you can see on the wildlife camera where they go afterwards and where they came from in the beginning. So I can pinpoint down where in this whole wall of rocks the den is. Because if I want to sit here and I don't want to disturb them, at least as I can, um, as possible, then I have to know more about them and I have to know where they go I can calculate if I sit downwind so that I don't interrupt them. But I can't really do that if I don't know which, which hole is the den. Maybe I'm sitting in front of it, you know, and I don't want that. So that's why it's good to bring in the wildlife camera and just check how the situation is. Okay, small breakdown. We want to shoot badgers, nocturnal or twilight active animals. And that's why I didn't bring my heavy 200 to 500, not that heavy, but I brought my more light intensive 70 to 200 lens. And as long as there's enough light, I can use a converter on it to get closer, but I also have a scene planned, which is kind of close to the camera. So that 70 to 200 is more than enough. So you see we are a bit more flexible on the lens side. I also brought my fluid head and I bring some camouflage to hide myself behind a natural blind. So with a bit of patient guiding by Petter, he sadly moved away, uh, I found his blind, his hide, and his den that he wanted me to find. And that's where we go now, and that's where we sit down, set up our gear, the camouflage, and we will wait and be quiet and don't make, yeah, don't make a sound at all. 
be as quiet as we can be to maybe get a glimpse of these funny and cute animals. I didn't have success that day. Quite a lean period I had going on for me the last couple of weeks, if not even month by now. This kind of passion does not really know breaks though. What I do before I leave is plant more cameras. So if I come back I can be sure if the animals my friend has seen some month ago are still around. Because if they are, I just have to put in the time. And what can I say? They were. But now it's still time to get them in front of the Z6. So I came back over the past week and just set my camera up a few more times and I can really recommend to everyone that's doing low light photography from time to time just to switch the video because with the shutter of 1 50th of a second you can just do so much more. I sat behind Petter's height when suddenly a head stuck up from the direction of the den. I would have imagined that they would be louder. My heart starts racing. Now I got to be calm, really calm. Gladly badgers have really poor eyesight. And the small guy starts to search for food all through the blueberries in front of me. I have seen badgers before, but I couldn't really capture them really good because I didn't have the right equipment. Now with the Z6, the, the ISO goes up quite a lot and at 6000, I still don't have to be really afraid that the photos are completely useless. So for photos, I go maybe up to 4000 to 6000 if I have to, and depending on the lens. And with video, at these times, what the forest allows, 2000 to 3000. Why don't I go higher? I don't really have to. Long summer nights and with a shutter of around 250i, just shoot a few shots until one is sharp. And that works pretty much. The badger ended up around 1.5 to 3 meters from me, so it was good to have a silent shutter and a short focal length, because my 200 to 500 would have come to a limit regarding focus in distance. My track camera show that the badgers are coming out around evening, early evening until yeah, middle of the night. That's most of what the track camera show. So it's a bit sad because this spot here is perfect. It's like the morning light is marvelous. So maybe I have to find another spot for the next year and the end of this year where I get a bit more evening light because here, yeah, you see it, it's a bit flat. There's not much to do, but badgers are here in the forests and they don't really come out that much apparently. And maybe that's what we have to live with, but maybe I can improve this. Small advice, you can always plan ahead a couple of things, like what you want to shoot in the season. So if you have a lean period like me, you are at least prepared when the magic finally happens. To close this video, I wish you a great week, holidays and summer. 
If you like this video, consider subscribing, leaving me a comment or a like. See you soon and have a lot of fun with your photography. Bye.